It's the most unscientific, scientific research we've ever attempted. The quest to find the country's worst roads. Mac, unscientific? Yes, but we undertook it with enthusiasm, traveling thousands of kilometers for close to a week and having dodged hundreds of potholes and speeding trucks, we were able to settle on a clear winner in our role of dishonor. So appalling. This thing here is the road. The depth is shocking to me. I really got quite scared. It's dangerous. It, you've got to be very careful where you drive. Driving in South Africa is a lot. Traffic exacerbated by load shedding, impatient drivers, buses, taxis, trucks, and potholes. In January, respected Daily Maverick journalist and Joburg resident Feriel Hafaji tweeted about her experience while in Bumalanga during the holidays. The road just got worse and worse and worse. And at some point, there was no more road left. She and her husband were traveling on the R36 on their way to the Kruger National Park. I mean, this makes me a little vulnerable to tell you because I try and not be a fearful person. But I said to, to Spence, let's turn around and go home, eh? This is much too nerve-wracking. Her tweet hit a chord with many South Africans and people started sharing similar experiences across the country. That was my most viral tweet ever. I literally got hundreds and hundreds of responses. So I started collating them and seeing if they're telling you a story. And then I realized actually it's a national story. Mm. Our whole road network is like that. And that is what set us off on our mission, to drive what are considered some of the worst roads in South Africa. We asked you, our viewers, to nominate potential candidates. And in the end, we settled on four regions in four different provinces. First up, we headed to Mpumalanga in search of the now infamous R36. Hello. Okay, for this official unofficial experiment to work, we've set up a camera on the bonnet. We have another camera inside the cab. You, Quibus, will be sitting on the back seat with the camera. And I also have my trusty assistant. Could you please explain to us how is this going to work? Yes, this is my road danger armometer. It's broken up into seven parameters, those being general road state, damage to the vehicle, the road pain, silence. So what he's trying to say is that we're going to drive this road and just see the state of it. Trusty assistant! <laughs> Let's go. The road is uh, looking not too bad. The nope. pixel will fade. Okay. You, you are paying attention to a lot of details. Within the first few kilometers, we count around 80 potholes. Many have been filled with sand. The uneven road surface doesn't seem to deter the large trucks barreling down the road. Oh gosh. The good news for future users, further south there is major construction on the road. But right now, that doesn't make driving it any easier. I realize you actually need an off-road vehicle to drive a provincial road. But if it were just the one bad road, drivers could try and avoid it. Sadly, all the provincial roads in the area are dotted with deep, menacing potholes. Do you worry ever about having to travel this road at night or not? Or is that not what you normally do? Uh, I normally do that, so I worry about it because it might, there might be a hijacking that might ha happen because you need to slow down because of the potholes. Some point you, you need to actually get off the road and travel on the side of the road. This is Mashishing. It used to be called Leidenberg, which means place of suffering. Looking at the roads, they should have perhaps kept the name. You don't want to drive on roads that are shocking like this. Oh okay. my goodness. Spiros Kovaris is a driving instructor and local ward councillor here in town. 
He knows these roads like the back of his hand. You know they don't pay me to push cars if we get stuck on cotton. We're not going to push the car, don't worry okay. about it. It's not, not my intention to get stuck. <laughs> and of course, it wasn't our intention to get stuck either. But this road to a local school for children with disabilities got the better of our production vehicle and some on-site emergency surgery was needed when the front bash plate got damaged. The collapse of road infrastructure has had a ripple effect on this community. This is unbelievable, Spiros. A lot of big companies have left town because of this poor management system of this. And this lack of interest, this lack of empathy. And readily rabatu? How? Mm. Like this? Really? This is not the way to do it. To better understand the overall state of our roads, we contacted SACI, the South African Institution of Civil Engineering, which published its fourth report card on infrastructure in December 2022. Friedrich Slabert serves on its board, and as the former chairperson of the transport division, he was responsible for collating the information used to compile the most recent infrastructure report card. One must realise that the roads aspects are varying from national roads, provincial roads, metropolitan roads, and then you have the lower level of district roads. South Africa has a road network of about 750,000 kilometres, with by far the majority, 80%, of our roads being gravel. But they are by no means less important. How do farmers get their products produced to the market? So if those roads are not in a good condition, then it has an economic impact on those people. But it also is a situation in terms of the social impact. Across the country, people rely on roads to get to schools, clinics, churches, and of course, their jobs. Bad roads affect everybody. Farmers that, are, that have got trucks and lorries and that are trying to supply goods to the market. The expenses have increased dramatically because of the poor roads. Dr. Jack Armour is the operations manager at Free State Agriculture. A lot of agricultural companies refuse to make deliveries to the farm anymore. So now the farm has to use his own transport to go and fetch those products. The Free State is notorious for bad roads. In fact, McFarlane was here just less than a year ago reporting on the worst roads and the provincial government's promises to fix them. But looking at the state of this provincial road, which is supposed to be tarred, I guess they've been busy doing other things. There, there are some roads where you've got to slow down to literally five, 10 kilometers an hour, and you've got to wait for oncoming traffic to try and navigate a piece of the road that is possible. Now we're in the beautiful Free State, driving from Makwad to Klokolan because we've heard, wow, that the roads are particularly bad here, littered with potholes, and that truck just scared me. <laughs> Once again, we are surprised by the amount of heavy traffic on what is a rather narrow road. The Free State is the central province in South Africa, so everybody transverses through the Free State. And one of the big culprits is manganese trucks. So the mining in the Northern Cape, these big trucks go through the Southern Free State and through some of the main roads in the Central Free State to the ports in Richards Bay and in, in PE and, and mess up our roads. The near collapse of our rail system hasn't helped matters. 226. 226. Traffic per se is not the cause. We design roads and we estimate through growth rates and current traffic counts, we estimate over the next 20 years what the loading will be. But So that we design for. But for overloading, you have no estimate for that. Also, you cannot design for illegal use that deep to... one yes. that deep one makes it even more dangerous yeah it's about 10 centimeters 
So trucks using roads not geared for heavy loads or even overloading trucks are having a huge impact on our roads. Law enforcement is supposed to be on the roads with way bridges, making sure that trucks aren't overloaded. That's another huge issue. So we stuck now with this road freight industry that is totally overloading our roads. Look at that. Yeah. On your side, how deep what? that is. Look how deep that is. Jeez. You hit this at a high speed. Potholes are not just a hazard for vehicles. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> While our provincial road network is not coping and at risk of failure, our municipal or regional roads are generally in an even worse state. Almost half of all our roads are managed by municipalities. And if you look at the legacy of municipal governance over the past two decades, it's no surprise that our roads, too, are falling apart. Station Street in Klokolan is a minefield. Have you long given up counting <laughs> how many potholes are on this road? Because the thing is that there's all the ones we're going through and then there's all the ones we're not going through. I'm trying to miss them, but you have to choose the lesser of the pothole. Right now, Tlokolang, leading in the pothole Olympics. But believe it or not, this is not the worst road we've encountered. For our northwest leg of our not-so-scientific study, we decided to take to social media and ask you where the worst roads were. And we were told to pick any road. So here I am on the R53 between Fentelsdorp and Swartrichens. And let me tell you, so far, so very, very bad. Trusty assistant counted over 400 potholes within a few kilometers, but couldn't keep up. For this, I've just written a lot in all caps. <laughs> Very scientific and accurate. <laughs> and some of these potholes are massive. That's about two meters. What? But how does a road end up looking like this? The short answer is 66 different road authorities in South Africa and no single overarching governing body. The smaller towns, they have about the same number of kilometers of road than the provinces. So now immediately it brings us to skills. Do we have the same types of, of skills available at the district level compared to a province? SACI's report card shows a dramatic decline in experienced professional engineers, indicated in red, working in local government. And this is apparent in many of our current road management systems. Once a pothole appears, it's actually already too late. If we do preventative maintenance, a certain action will cost one rand. If we delay it by one or two years, that same co cost will be eight rand. And if we delay it by another two or three years, that cost will be 16 rand. Right now, we need an estimated 500 billion rand to fix our roads, money we don't have. Wow. That was a big one. Have you been counting them? How many do we have so far? Uh, 73. 73 potholes on this road that we've been driving? Yes. I would never have guessed. I thought it was much less than that. This just shows I'm becoming immune to sighting potholes. After five days on the road and having driven almost 3,000 kilometers, we're back where we started, in the leafy suburbs of Johannesburg, where the roads sadly tell the same story. It was over 40,000 potholes in Johannesburg. That does tell you that you're getting to the end of your usable um, road network. But what would you say to somebody, I mean, what are potholes a symptom of? Potholes are a symptom of corruption. They're a symptom of an absence of maintenance. And they're a symptom and a symbol of a government that simply doesn't care anymore. In our search to find the country's worst roads, you nominated them, we drove them, and it's clear pretty much all of them need serious attention. But where do we start? To help us figure it all out, we're joined by Leighton Beard from the Automobile Association. Now, Leighton, you saw our insert before the break in your line of work. Yes, it's very disappointing to see our roads like that, but not surprising, right? 
Not surprising at all. And when I think w when you look at some of the road fatality statistics in our country and you look at the emails that we get in on a daily basis and the social media activity, and as you mentioned in your insert, Ferial's activity on social media around this issue, not surprising at all. It's a huge problem in South Africa. But Leighton, it's also, I guess, easy to overstate this case. But would you say that all our infrastructure has all but collapsed? I think it is overstating it to a, a certain extent. If you look at the insert that Claire did, many of the roads that they drove, some of the national roads, to get to the smaller areas, to get to the rural towns, were not in a terrible condition. Some of those roads were actually in a, a pretty okay condition. It's when you get to the smaller provincial towns and to the rural towns where the real problem begins to set in. And this becomes especially problematic in some of the agricultural areas where farmers have to take stuff from their farms, from the farm gate, and deliver it to, uh, to communities and to bigger cities. And those vein routes, those arterial routes that take them from there to the main roads are very bad. And that's what's very problematic. And it's, you know, obviously it's a safety concern for the AA, but it's also obviously a massive economic issue for the country as well. Talking about an economic issue, 500 billion rand yeah. to fix the issue, assuming we can get the money, is it even possible and is there will from government to do so? It's a very good question and I think when you look at the answer that, uh, that Ferial gave at the end of your insert, um, potholes are emblematic of corruption, misappropriation of funds, uh, a lack of political will. So we need to start sorting these issues out. We talk about the misappropriation of funds. Is money being spent in the right areas? And clearly it isn't. So from our point of view, from a, a positive take on it, yes, it can be solved, but it needs to be looked at immediately. We need municipalities to play their role as well. When you look at a statistic that 41% of municipalities received clean audits in the last financial year, that's where the problem sets in. So obviously there is a huge issue in terms of corruption and the misappropriation of funds. And then also, Claire, um, as Mr. Slubbert from SACI said, we need experience, we need people who know what they're doing to get back on the roads to help fix these issues. And that's also not happening. But other than a government-driven initiative, is there another way to fix the problem? Because it seems like private citizens are wanting to fix the problem themselves and wanting to do that now. I think there's a lot of private citizens who really want to get involved and who want to make a difference, but it's not cheap. I mean, fixing potholes is not something that everybody can afford to do, and not everybody has the time to do that. So certainly um, there are people who would like to fix uh, potholes outside of their road, and they may want to fix three or four further up the road. But it becomes an economic issue because, and I think a lot of people are saying, we already pay taxes, we already contribute to the government, we expect and we have a right to expect that these things are going to get done. So you may find private citizens trying to fix the problem, but it's an, an economic issue again. We, we're paying taxes on the one hand. It's expensive to fix the, the, uh, the potholes um, outside my house. Where, where do we begin and end? This has to be a government responsibility. It has to be a responsibility of roads agencies across South Africa to look at this as a matter of priority. It's not only an issue of uh, preventative measures that need to be taken. At the moment, South Africa is in a situation where restorative measures also need to be taken. And the sooner we begin, the sooner we can get to a solution. But unless we get to that point, it's not going to happen. Claire, I also just want to come in there. I was in the free state. I know what the state of the roads were. You've gone back once again. Has it got any better? The roads in the Free State are as bad as people have said they are. And what we actually found were there were people on the side of these very bad roads filling in potholes with sand that they were getting from the shoulder and mm. motorists driving past throwing money uh, just to show their appreciation that something is being done because yeah. motorists know that these potholes are not just an inconvenience, they're extremely dangerous. So yes. that's how bad it is. But I mean, what's the point of fixing our potholes if we don't get our railways right? Right, Leighton? No, absolutely. I think transport is an ecosystem and each part of that transport system, each part of that ecosystem needs to work in harmony with the other parts. So you need rail, you need road freight, but at the same time, if you're going to have a lot of road freight on your roads, you need proper traffic law enforcement 
as again Mr. Slubbert said, we need proper way bridges. We need to ensure that those uh, those trucks are not overloaded. Overloaded. I'm not truck blaming. We need trucks. They play an incredibly important part of our economy. But certainly, we also need to ensure that rail works, and we need to ensure that all of these things work together. We need to ensure there's proper pedestrian crossings. We need to ensure there's proper road markings. Some of the inserts that you had there, there weren't road markings even on some of the good roads. The road signs weren't working. Um, we saw construction of a road, but nobody was working on that road. Um, so these are the types of things that we need to see happening all the time. That ecosystem needs to work in harmony, and each of those components needs to play its role. At the moment, that's not happening. Mm. So Leighton, outside of posting very irate videos, is there anything that ordinary citizens can actually do? I think there is. Um, you know, when, when we got our driving licenses, Mac and Claire, um, we, we were living in a time where potholes were not such an issue. I think when there are younger drivers coming through, I've got two younger drivers in my family, um, we've got to teach them about potholes. I know it sounds a little silly, but we've got to teach them how to approach potholes. We've got to teach younger drivers that you've got to slow down, you've got to be careful, you've got to drive to the conditions of the road. Um, if it's very dangerous, you've got to pull over. If it's, you know, obviously if there's blackouts and there's no lights, you've got to be very careful. These are the types of messages we've got to get through to younger drivers. We want to all fix the problem. Are we going to do that by fixing it a sand hole by sand hole? I don't think that is the solution. We need to put pressure on municipalities. We need to ensure that governance is done properly. Um, as private citizens, we can just drive safer than what we are at the moment. That, I think, is the big message for me at the moment. After the trip of thousands of kilometers, I'll tell you, it was quite overwhelming. The problem seems insurmountable. Where do we start fixing the problem and making sure our roads are drivable and safe again? I'll go back to what Ferial said. It's about misappropriation of funds. It's about corruption. Um, it's about political will. And I think there is where South Africans need to start we need to get, um, we need to ensure there is political will. We need to have more pressure from places like the Auditor General to ensure that money is appropriated properly, that municipalities are not squandering money. We need to make sure that government is spending money where money needs to be spent instead of spending money in those areas where it's not supposed to be spent. And I think for, for South Africans, that needs to be critical. We can't go out and fix every pothole as South Africans. Um, if you ask me where we need to start, we need to start by pressuring our government to fix these problems. Thank you so much, Leighton. I know it was heavy. I was going to ask you for a silver lining, but let's see if any action is taken. Thank you so much for joining us in studio tonight. Thank you, Claire. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.